Anytime I'm going to pray so God can use me anywhere, Lord. God. Amen. I don't feel like I feel like worshiping this morning. Amen. Amen. God has been so good, hasn't he? It's been good all week. Amen. We, we didn't make it to be 40, 50, 60 so. Amen. On our own strength. Amen. We had God that is able to use us and be with us and carry us all along the way. Amen. Can I get a witness up in here this morning? Amen. In, 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 in this form of welcoming, I want you to be welcomed into a worship experience. Amen. This ain't church only, but this is worship. This is us to get in front of God. And tell him how good he is and magnify him. Amen? Amen. So in our welcome this morning, I, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. Amen. I want you to feel welcome. I want you to breathe in here to understand that you're welcome. I want you to know that uh, the smiles on the face, amen, is one that is welcoming. Amen. So... If there's anybody this morning that are visitors, would you like a word to say? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Everybody going to speak? Holla no, 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 no. You can stand right on up. I, I, Anybody that has a word, I'll start with my sister right here, Mother Bell. Amen. I, I, I hope that you're going to get something this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Is it? All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Uncle. Amen. Amen. Back to the cold weather. Praise God. Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 We're excited for you to be here. Amen. Uh, our pastor is uh, Amos Cruz. Amen. And I know that he's uh, joyful in his heart. Amen. I, I, I'm pretty sure he's going to uh, give some words uh, of you, if not before or after service this morning. Amen. So we want you to feel welcome. And, and, and all uh, you on, online, amen, I want you to, to feel welcome uh, this morning as we look at praising God. Let me just interest you in the word of God this morning before we move on further in, welcome, in, in, in our welcome. Uh, it's 100 uh, 
number of songs. Everybody know that. It says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Amen. Uh, come serve the Lord with gladness. First of all, come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we not ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Here's what I like. Verse four, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Let's be rejoyful in his house. Amen this morning. And magnify his name and glorify him. Amen with praise. Can you do that this morning? Can you exalt him this morning? Can, can you breathe, amen, the word of God this morning? Can you say thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for us? Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. Amen. Y'all please be seated. Let us have... A prayer this morning. Will you bow your heads with me this morning? Heavenly Father, we come here to lift you up. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this welcome, Father God, the community. God, open it up. Amen to your grace. We know that your grace is there, sufficient for us, God. We know it's remarkable. Amen. Anybody that don't know you, God, we pray, Lord, that your special grace will fall fresh on someone this morning. And God, I pray, Lord, for peace and with your will and understanding. Let those that are here be, feel welcome. And Lord, that you're able to receive them. And Lord, let us exalt your name powerfully. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. We're going to stand for our responsive reading. I will read the lighter print and you will respond with the bold. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I will prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Goodness and follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord have blessings on the readers and the doers of his word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I didn't say praise me. <laughs> did, did God give you breath this morning? Yes, he did. did he let you get up and make it here safely? Yes, he did. Then I would say we have a reason 
to praise God. Amen? Amen. 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 And now is our time for giving. Yes. Giving is a part of worship. Now, giving is also an expression of our obedience to God. And if you take the time to look in your Bible, you will find that there are many scriptures that talk about giving. But giving is also an expression of love, our love for God, our trust in God, and of joy to God for what he has done for us. You see, our God is a giver, and he wants us to be like him. Everything we have in life is because God has generously allowed us to have it. But we know that giving can be hard to do. It challenges us to be in our selfishness. But God, being God, rewards us when we are generous and give. His word in Luke 6, chapter verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and run it over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured unto you again. In other words, God will take what you give and cause others to give back to you in abundance, not just in money, but in health, in strength, in relationship, our God gives more than we can ever get. He is generous. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let's prepare our hearts to give generously and cheerfully. So what we'd like for you to do is, if you would all stand, face the center aisle, and if we would, if you would, start from the from the back, come to the forward. Bring your tithes and offering and go back around the wall to your seat. Thank you so much. Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord God, for every gift, every offering, every tithe that was given in abundance, generously, Lord God. And God, as we give, we thank you for how you are giving back to us. In Jesus' name, God, we pray that these gifts will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. amen. And now is the time for our community prayer. This is the time where we pray not just for ourselves, not just for our church, but we pray for the community at large. We pray for our neighbors. We pray for our city, for our state. We pray for our country. We pray for the world. Because we all know that the world needs prayer, amen? And God has admonished us as believers to always pray. So I ask you to join with me as we go before the Lord in prayer. And as I'm praying, I ask that you would pray in agreement with me for God to move mightily in this place, Pillar of Hope, 
in every church that's open in his name, that God would move in our city because there is so much to be praying for in the country and in the world. So I invite you to join me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the God who knows all, who sees all, the God who sits high but is ever near. God, we come before you this morning, Lord God, first to say, God, thank you. God, we thank you that you have given us this brand new day, a day we have never seen, a day we will never see again, Lord God. But you have allowed us to be a part of it, Lord God. For that, God, we are grateful. You woke us up this morning. You gave us our right minds, Lord God. The activities of our limbs, Lord God, you allowed us to arrive here safely. God, we thank you for that. And God, we want to do what you've called us to do. You said pray one for another, Lord God. So God, we come now in the name of Jesus praying for this place called Pillar of Hope Christian Church, Lord God. We pray for every person, every family that is represented. We pray for our pastors, our pastor and our ministers, our everybody, God. We just pray that your hand would touch. God, you know what we need. You know better than us what we need. So God, we ask you by the power of your own spirit, Lord God, to meet every need according to your riches in glory, God. We pray for every church house that is open in your name. God, we pray for the pastors and the parishioners, God. We pray, God, that you will cause us, Lord God, to be about doing what you have called us to do. That is to go out and make disciples, Lord God, to go out and tell others about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, God. God, we pray, Lord God, for our city, our state, our country. We pray for this world, Lord God, that God, we would, we would value life as you do, Lord God. That we would love one another as you have loved us, Lord God. Your word says, Lord God, that you so love the world that you sent your only son for us, Lord God. That we might have the opportunity to the tree of life that we might have everlasting life, Lord God. Lord, we pray for our leaders, that you would speak into their ears, Lord God, that they would seek your face, God, that they would know how to lead people, Lord God, so that we, your children, might live in peace, God. We pray, God, for the president. We pray for Congress. We pray, Lord God, that we, they would be about doing what is right according to your word, Lord God, not according to their own mind, Lord God, or what they think, Lord God, but according to your word, Lord God. God, they need to hear from you, Lord God. So we pray, God, that you would put someone in their path who will speak your word, Lord God, who will hear a word from you and who will deliver that word, Lord God, so that they might do what is right according to you, Lord God. God, we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus for all those who are sick, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would touch their bodies, Lord. God, you promised in your word, Lord God, that healing is your children's bread, Lord. So, God, we pray for healing right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And even as we pray, God, we pray, Lord God, that thy will be done. God, we know that healing is not always on this side. It's not always what we think, but it is what you say, Lord God. So, God, we say thy will be done. And prepare us, Lord God, to receive what it is that you will to be done, Lord God. We thank you for it. God, we pray for those who are grieving, who are mourning, who have lost loved ones, Lord God. We pray that you would strengthen and comfort them, Lord God. God, whether it be in word or song, whether it's you send somebody by the wayside to give them a word, Lord God. We pray, God, however you do it, whatever you do, God, we thank you for giving them the comfort and strength to make it through, Lord God, that they can see that you are the all-loving God, that you are the all-knowing God, and that you are with them as they walk through this journey called morning, God. Thank you, Lord. And God, we pray for your wisdom, for your guidance and your direction. We don't know how to do this walk. We can't do it without you, Lord God. 
As a matter of fact, God, we are nothing without you, Lord God. So, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will speak into our spirits by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that we might hear what you would have us to do, that we might hear what you would have us to say, that we might know when you would have us to say it, Lord God. Give us your wisdom, Lord God. Give us your guidance, Lord God. Direct us, Lord God, into the things that you would have us to do, that we might be about what you have called us to do, Lord God, to love one another from heart to heart and breast to breast, Lord God, to go out and to tell the world about, tell the world about a God who loves everybody and who desires that everyone should be saved, Lord God. And God, we pray for this service today, God. We ask your Holy Spirit to abide in this place, Lord God. Have your way in us, Lord God. Touch us right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Don't let us leave here the same way we came, God. We bow before you, God, in reverence, in honor, Lord God, in worship. And we ask you, God, to accept our praise and our worship as a sweet smell in your nostril, Lord God. Be glorified in this place, in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And now our young people are going to come in honor of Black History Month. They are going to come and I ask you to be patient with our children as they are learning and growing. Amen. The Black History Month theme for this year focuses on the importance of resistance. Each person that they have chosen and our children chose who they wanted to represent. Each person chosen resisted injustice and oppression. Their efforts and that of others have been uh, for a dignified, self-determined life in a just democratic society in the United States and beyond. Let's continue to educate our children, both to, of our history and to resist the things of the past and to resist the narrative that they cannot achieve greatness and that black people are intellectually in, inferior. Let us teach our children that with God, they can be all that he has called them to be. First, we have Brandon to come. Uh, W.C. Handy. I was born in Alabama in 1873 and I became known as the father of blues. I wrote songs, arranged music, and I published music. I taught what is now Alabama A&M University, but my love, but my, my music called me. Some of my music is Yellow Dog Blues, Joe Turner Blues. My great hit is called St. Louis Blues. I died in New York on March 28, 1958. More than 150,000 people came to my funeral. My name is William Christopher Handy, but you might know me as W.C. Handy. Jesse Owens. I was born September 12, 1912 here in Alabama. I set a long jump record that lasts 25 years. I also won four medals in the Olympic game in Berlin where I jumped more than 26 feet. My family moved to Cleveland, Ohio when I was nine years old. I became a star athlete when I broke records all working my way through college. I 
In 1955, I was named Ambassador of Sports of, and in 1970, I inducted into the Alabama Hall of Fame. I died March 31st, 1980. You know me as Jesse Owens, but my name is James Cleveland Owens. Kayla. Quote, the human rights leader was another Alabama native. Miss Who spoke at many large rallies for peace and justice. She participated in protests with working people of all race. She was the wife of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and they had four children. Miss Who studied music and education in college. She met Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. while she was studying concert singing in Boston. They were married on June 18, 1953 near Maryland, Alabama after Dr. after Dr. Martin Luther King was killed on April 4, 1968. Miss Who worked to preserve and advance his legacy in June 1986. She founded the Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolent social change in Atlanta. She died on January 30, 2006. 14,000 people attend her funeral. President George W. Bush and three first presidents came. Her funeral was shown on TV. She was the first black woman to lie in state in George Capitol Square. Good job. Now, I'm asking you if we will stand and uh, Praise God for what our children have done. Let's give them a hand clap of praise. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Do everybody have uh, the song Lift Every Voice and Sing? Amen. I'm, I'm asking that you would sing along with us. And um, I'm, I'm, going, I'm, I'm going to ask you to stand. <laughs> Amen. As we go forth and sing this song. And we're just going to sing the first stanza, the first uh, part of it. Amen. But I want us to be a little boisterous of how we sing this song. Sing it with meaning. Sing it with clarity. Amen. Sing it with some praise. Amen. Amen. Lift every voice and sing. Lift 
every voice and sing till the earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let us rejoice in bright eyes of listening sky. Let us resound loud as a rolling sea. that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the proof that the present brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on to victory is won. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, is God good to you? Has he been good to you? Well, I'm going to tell you something. He's been very, very, very good to me. He brought my family in to see me. I love you guys. It's good to see you. He brought my church family in here because this is the most I've seen this church being filled uh, since we've been here. So let us do everything we can to keep this going. Now, I, I want to share with you, before I, before I get started, I'm going to share with you uh, what God has put on my heart to give to you. But before we do that, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us to come into your presence to give you praise, honor, and glory because you didn't have to bring us here. But Father God, we ask that you clean our hearts and wash our minds of everything that the world has put in here. Father God, clean it out of us. Let us start with a pure heart and a pure mind so that we might worship you. That is the, perp the reason and the purpose that you put us here, Father God, so that we might glorify you in everything that we do. Now, Father God, let me decrease and let you increase and let your word go forth so that your people might hear. And let all God's children say amen. amen. Now, the, the, the title of my sermon is God is mercy. And our passage is from Micah 6 8. Now, if you turn your book to Micah 6 8, and we'll, we'll, we'll read that together. And I want to remind you that prior to the eighth verse, the prophet was given to the people the words that God had given to him about bringing their worship, their offerings to him. And God had noticed something within them that they probably didn't see themselves. And God's word says in Micah 6, 8, that he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Now, I want you to focus in on that loving mercy part because that's why we're what we're going to talk about today, about God being mercy. God is mercy. God is, his love for mercy is all that we really need to focus on at this moment. Okay, uh, one of my favorite writers in all of history, and this being Black History Month, I really have to share this with you, is Booker T. Washington. And he, 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 he wrote some things that really stood out to me in life as I was growing up, and I remember reading this, and, and one of those passages or, that he wrote was, the happiest people are those who do the most for others, and the most miserable ones are those who do the least. So let's not be one of those miserable people when we're dealing with other folks. We should do everything we can for others. Uh, he also wrote, I will permit no man, no matter what his color might be, to narrow and degrade my soul 
by making me hate him. There's no room in God's mercy or his love for hate. He writes also, of all forms of slavery, there is none that is so harmful and degrading as that form of slavery which tempts one human being to hate another by reason of his ethnicity or color. One man cannot hold another man down in the ditch without remaining in the ditch along with him. So if somebody is holding you down, you got to remember they are there with you also. Right? Now, listen to this, and this is the greatest one that I love the most. Great men or women cultivate love. Only little men or women cherish a spirit of hatred. So with God being love and God being mercy, he tells us we can't focus on hating another. We must focus on loving another. And the first thing to do in that is to do what God said, to, to love mercy. Remember, he didn't say to do mercy or to show mercy. He says to love mercy. So how do you love something? It has, starts in your heart. It starts in your heart, and now in Genesis chapter 4, it tells us a story of a family, a family that started off good because God created them, man and woman, Adam and Eve, and they started to have children after they disobeyed God and sin entered into the world. So you can imagine the first two sons were, had sin already in their lives, Okay? Cain was a tiller of the ground, and Abel was a shepherd. He shepherded the flock. And then it, it was their time to bring their offering to God. They went into his presence, just like Micah was telling the people of Israel, when you bring your offering, that's all well and good, but the internal part of you is what God requires to do just to love mercy, and to walk humbly. So Abel's offering, we can tell by God's response, is from his heart. Cain's is not. Verse 7 in Genesis 4 gives us a, 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 an insight into why we can tell that his heart wasn't right with God. God talks to Cain after he's rejected his offering, and he says, if you do well or if you do right, you will, you, won't your sacrifice be accepted? But if you do what's wrong, sin is crouching at the door. He's talking about the door of his heart. Sin is crouching at your door. It desires you. It, it, it wants to control you. But you, Cain, must master it. Now, I, I can give you a little insight because Cain didn't pass that test. He immediately, his countenance fell, and his face was sullen, and he was starting to, that anger and resentment was starting to build up in him. So what does he do instead of praying to God and asking, Lord, how can I get over this? He goes to his brother, and he says, come here, let me talk to you. He takes him out into the field, and something happens in between the two of them that the, the Bible doesn't tell us what happened. But Cain gets so angry that he kills his brother, his own blood, someone that looks like him. That can explain why you see so much killing and hatred and anger in the world today, why we kill people that look like us. We're all made in the image of God. So what gives us the right to take another's life? How many of you know that when you talk about somebody behind their back, you're stabbing them with your tongue? You're creating murder right there. But God didn't create us to do that. He created us to love mercy. He wants us to have that. We can see that Cain didn't love mercy. He showed what, like the unrepentant servant in Matthew 18. Think about this. You have a master and two servants. One servant owes a tremendous debt 
that he could not pay back in 10 lifetimes. So he goes before the master and he begs, Lord, please don't kill me. Don't throw me in stocks. I will pay you back all. And the master was moved by his, his begging, his, his pleading, and he forgives him of all his debt. That's you before God. We're asking God to forgive us our debts. But what does this servant do? He is forgiven of his debt, and he goes out and he sees another servant who owes him. Hmm, another one that looked just like him. Of the same blood, probably, because remember now, we're all created in God's image. But instead of showing this man mercy like he was shown, he has him cast into the stocks and into prison until he is able to pay back what is owed. The other witnesses are there, and they go back and they tell the master what this unmerciful servant, this wicked servant does. And he is called back before the master to pay for what he has done. Don't be like this unrepentant, this unmerciful servant when you're dealing with others. We must show mercy because God tells us in Micah 6, 8 to love mercy. That's an action that we have to do with our hearts, with, deep within our hearts. So before we can do that, we have to recognize the sin that stops us from loving mercy, give it to God, and ask God to show us how to love mercy. Mercy. So you, want, you might ask why is love, loving mercy required? Well, Charles Haddon Spurgeon writes in his, his, his piece, The Master's Motive for Mercy, or God's Motive for Mercy. He wrote down here, now listen, man, that means you and me, once more God can, by saving a one such as you are, not only does he glorify his patience and mercy, but he also displays his power. It's evident that it is not an easy task to conquer you. That's your spirit. Not easy to conquer your spirit because you've been headstrong, hard-headed, and not listening to God. And if you can't say amen to that, you might as well say ouch. You have been like a Leviathan whose heart is as hard as stone. Now, God can make a stony heart into a fleshly heart that beats and moves and gives and loves mercy. That love, word loving mercy is translated from the Hebrew as compassion, showing compassion to another. God's mercy toward humanity it's just like the same kind of divine protection that a baby has in its mother's womb. It feels and is protected from all the ravages of the world. And according to Isaiah, the Lord calls the people of Israel those have, who have been born by me from before birth. They are carried from the womb. And he tells them, even until your old age and when your hairs have turned Gray, I will carry you. That's God telling you that he's going to carry you. I have made you. He didn't just make Fred or David. He didn't just make Bridget or Dana. He made all of us in his image. And that's how we should look at each other regardless of the color of some of one's skin. We need to let go of some hurt past and start loving mercy on those who couldn't have mercy on us. Because look at what they did to Jesus. They beat him. They punished him. They nailed stakes in his hands. And what does he do for them? He told his father in heaven to forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus showed us how to Love, mercy, because they hated on him because he claimed to be who he really was. Mm -hmm. 
and they didn't want to believe it because their hearts were hard as stone. We can't walk around with a heart of stone and telling God we love him. I've known too many people that will stand in front of you and say, I love the Lord, and as soon as your back is turned, will hurt you. God has mercy for you because you are his creation. God shows us how to love mercy. Now, it was a spiritual worship that God required, not a physical worship. We can bring our money here. We can bring our family here. We can bring in our best clothes. We can come and look good all we want. But if our hearts aren't right, God will turn you away and tell you to come back when your heart is right. There is no other gift more than what God wants than you, your heart, and he can clean it out. That's why the prophet mentions three things that God requires. To walk justly, to do what's right. But to love mercy, the kindnesses of life, showing people kindness. And he wants us to give them these kindnesses cheerfully. Remember, he doesn't say to do mercy, but he says to love it, to take delight in it, to find great pleasure in forgiveness of injuries, in the helping of the poor, and in the cheering up of the sick, in the teaching of the ignorant, and winning back sinners to the ways of God. Now, the ways of this world will twist you and turn you and have you going in all different kinds of directions. Believe me, I know I've been there. I tried to drink all my sins. Well, I was drinking in the sin, and I was living a life that was totally against what God wanted me to live. I still st sometimes stumble, and I wanted to please God, but I didn't know how. I didn't know how until he, he, he showed me some things in life especially through Jesus Christ. When I learned about how he sacrificed himself so that I might have eternal life, I started thinking differently about life and how I treated other people because I was a user of folks. Not only did I use drugs and alcohol, I used people to get what I wanted. But God had to take me and, and, and broke me down into little bitty pieces so that he could put me back together and show me his way, his right way. The first thing he showed me how to do was walk right before him. I couldn't keep hanging out in the clubs at night and, and smoking and drinking and chasing women because that wasn't right before God. I had to stop fighting with people who, who I did not like, who didn't look like me, who, who didn't talk like me. I couldn't keep going on like that because God had to Change that old man and, and give me a new man. He, he wanted my praise and my worship to, to smell like a rose before him. And the only way to do that was not in my own righteousness, but the righteousness that Christ gave for me on the cross. No offering is acceptable to God unless the heart is right with him. Remember, Cain's heart wasn't right. God told him what was about to happen to him, and he didn't listen. So today, if you're listening and sin has crept in, God has already given us the antidote, and that's Jesus Christ. God is compassionate and gracious and slow to anger, and he wants us to be the same way. That's why he gave us two ears, two eyes, and one mouth. The two ears so that we could be quick to hear. The two eyes so that our understanding will be open. The one mouth is so that we will be slow to speak and slow to anger because our anger does not produce the righteousness of God. Our anger brings nothing but trouble. Ask Cain. He'll tell you that. Because he was marked and God sent him out into society as a marked man so that no one would kill him because Hey, God tells us that vengeance is his, not mine. I'm not the giver of life of anyone. 
and I am not the taker of life of anyone, but God is. God's name is love. God is mercy. And I can tell you in the names that the Hebrews use tells us all. Yahweh Mala, the God of recompense. God says in Romans 12 that vengeance is his, not ours. He says he will repay. So we should never try to avenge for what somebody has done to us or even to somebody who did something to our family. Yahweh Makadeshim, the Lord your sanctifier, he will clean you up and turn you back out, a clean person, into society so that you can tell others what he did for you. you Yahweh Rohi, the Lord is my shepherd. He takes care of you the way a shepherd tends his sheep. How many of you ever been to a farm and you saw how they tend their sheep? They watch over them day and night. They feed them when they need to be fed. They clip them down in the winter times or in the summer so that the wool can be used for other things. But they also take care of them with love and kindness. He cares for you and he will lead you beside still waters and green pastures. Yahweh Shammah, the Lord who is present. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. He is with you forever. He is your best friend who never betrays you. Your friends will betray you. They will leave you on the side of the road. But God, Jesus Christ, will never, ever, 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 ever leave you. No. Yahweh Sidkenu is the Lord, our righteousness. When we believe in Jesus Christ, he becomes our righteousness. He forgives our sins and washes us with his blood. And Yahweh Jireh, or as the old preachers would say, Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. We don't have to worry about what we're going to put on in the morning because he has already provided for us. The birds of the air don't look for a place to sleep because guess what? God has already provided that. So us made in his image shouldn't have to worry about a thing. Now, as I close, I want to give you this from Jeremiah chapter 12. God says, go and proclaim these words to the north. Now, the prophet was given the word to Israel, and I'm going to give it to you. His words will say, return faithless Israel, declares the Lord. So I'm going to tell you, return faithless Terrence to the Lord. Return faithless Birmingham to the Lord. Return the United States of America, turn back to the Lord. Turn the rest of this world back to the Lord. But we must go and proclaim to the people out there to turn back to the Lord because he is our only salvation. We can't find salvation in the color of our skin or that man on TV preaching. We have to turn to God who gave us life. And let me close with the words of a, 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 a hymn. I would sing it for you, but I've been banned from singing in the pulpit. You can ask my wife why. And then Donnie McClurkin made this song very, very well, and I could never touch that, so I'm not even going to try. But he says to, to the Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your blood that makes a way to come into your presence and glorify your name. Lord, I stand amazed at what I see. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercies I see day after day. Forever faithful to me. Always providing for me. Great is your mercy toward me. Great is your grace. Bow your heads. Father God, thank you for this time 
Thank you for your words. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Now, Father God, show us how to love each other and to love mercy so that we might show others your power, your will, and your way. Father God, we are nothing without you, and we'll be nothing going forward without you. But we need all that you have for us, Father God, in this day and going forward. It's in Jesus' name, Father, that, Father God, that we give you thanks for your kindness, your mercy, and your grace. And let all God's people say amen. We've heard the word as the man of God spoke. Here at Pillar of Hope, we hold on three words, faith, family, freedom. Faith is a choice. You must choose to believe that he is God. You must choose to believe that he can do and will do all that he has proclaimed that he will do. The word says it's impossible to please God if you do not believe that he is. Here is the time in the service where you can acknowledge that God is. He's more than a provider. He's more than a healer. He is our Savior and our Lord. Scripture says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be, not might, you shall be saved. So now, I really don't like this term, but it's been used so much. The door of the church is open. Let me tell you something. The door of the kingdom of heaven is always open. It never closes. But here, at this appointed time, in this anointed place, if you're watching on Facebook, if you're here in the congregation, and you find that you need a Lord, you need a Savior, this is your opportunity to call on the name of Jesus, to make the choice to believe that he is. You heard the word that said, love mercy. You know how much God loves mercy? He loves mercy so much that he gave his son that you might have the right to everlasting life. That's how much he loves you. Without mercy, there can be no forgiveness. But because of mercy, there is grace, favor we don't deserve. God is calling. Will you answer? Will you confess him as Lord and Savior? As a musician plays, you can come now. Would there be one? Amen. Now, after we extend the invitation to the fellowship in the kingdom, we also open up the altar for altar call. Maybe you stand in need of prayer. You need someone to pray for you and pray with you. Sometimes that prayer is just to say thank you. Sometimes it's just, Lord, I need you. So if you stand in need of intercessory prayer, now is the time to come. One of the ministers, the deacon, will pray for you and pray with you. You don't have to carry the burden by yourself. Scripture says, prayers of the righteous availeth much. Amen. Amen. 
So if that's where we are in the service, we're going to stand and sing our closing song. And we pray that you have received something you can carry with you the rest of the week. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, let it guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.